This is the Real Eyes Recognized Podcast. Now your hosts, Dustin Gutkowski and UFC fighter Kevin Holland. Hey, hey, I asked you to do the last one. I asked you to do the last one, and you were like looking at me, and I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. I got you. Let's go. Every time, so I was like, every time. We got this. Everybody goes, Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. His name? I can do this one if you want me to. I know his You didn't know her name. You didn't know her name. That's what I was trying to say. Only <laughs> only fans, so and then he's trying to play it cool, it. and then he's like, oh, look at me. Uh, and, and like, he doesn't know her fucking name. I'm so glad he didn't, because I didn't know her name either. And I was like, holy shit. And then he played it cool, and then she's like, you didn't introduce me to OnlyFans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you slid in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But, okay, take so two. Behind the scenes. All right. You got it? Yeah, this is real eyes recognized, and we know everybody's fucking name today, okay? Hey, we're just fucking All right, motherfucking me. My guy is ranked now. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Mess with Mike one more time, my guy. Sorry, I'm ready to go. Yes, okay. Dustin, you do this shit, bro. Yeah, it's the elementary fucking the B team today. Someone phone a friend. He pulled some help. God, okay. Take four. Okay, we got it. Hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> hey, hey, here we go. hey. Okay, uh, okay, we're ready. Okay. Can we just keep all that in? Here we go. Here we go. It's perfect to keep going. Yeah, hey, well, that's what we're doing. No introduction because we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Ain't in, but we're here. We're having a good time. We're having fun. What's good? What's going on? We got a special guest. You know this guest name. Oh, yeah, he's your yeah. motherfucking Yang. Yeah, here. Yeah. And, and he's crying. He's got the camera yeah. I'm laughing so hard. Right, yeah. Good times. Good, good, good times. Rank. Oh, we're starting. Man. Ranked. We ranked now. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. What are you top ten now? Top fifteen. Uh, top top fifteen for sure. Top fourteen. I've been in and out the rankings without even having a fight, man. Yeah. In and out. In and out the rankings. They pull you in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause like I remember after the Tony Kelly fight, I got the ranked fifteen spot, and then a week later I was out out of it. Umar took my spot, and I was like, I get it, but then at the same time, like, all right, whatever. Uh, then a week later, I'm back in it, and I'm tied with Umar at number fifteen. And it was like that for like about a couple weeks to a month, and I'm like. This doesn't make no fucking no. sense. Doesn't make sense. Like, I didn't look. No other division had no tied for fifteen shit. And then uh, I think uh, after that morale fight, Jose Aldo got Jose Aldo retired, so he got taken out. I get popped in, but I get popped in at fourteen. I'm like, this is weird. That's like, this is weird. How did you lose ranking after your last fight? You didn't even do anything. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just sitting back, just like, huh? I could sit home and just watch myself be ranked 11. Watch, watch yeah. my next my next three weeks. Just wait how it plays out. Number 11. Watch. I seen that. I seen that happen at 85. I, uh, I was watching the ranks just go like as they were matchmaking. I was like, do you guys just like change the rankings for the yeah. matchmaking to make yeah. more sense or like, I don't yeah. get it. That's that's the weird part to me. That's what always kind of confused me. And especially whenever like I've always like thought the rankings were a little bit like weird in the beginning, even mm -hmm. before like the whole UC thing. But once I got into the rankings, I was like, and then like my whole little spiel with them, I was like, ah, I don't know, man. It's like it's it's a lot weirder than what it is. Don't worry, pound for pounds worse. Hey, <laughs> yeah, pound no pound guys worse. retired. He's number two. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, like so. Usman was number one for a while, right? Yeah, one loss. And it's like, where is he at on the rankings now? Like fucking nine, eight, or something like that. For pound for pound, for pound for pound, he was number one. Yeah, and like very a very dominant now, guy. Yeah, you know, uh, wasn't even losing rounds. You know, very dominant guy. Uh, and then you put they put they put Volkolowski, where I always say his fucking name. They put him at number one, right? Uh, Israel at number two, which I don't understand because Izzy just lost a fight not too long ago to to John Blokovich, who yeah. who was never number one or even top five in my eyes. Uh, and then you have number three now being uh, Isla, right? Uh, yeah, Did he, he go to number three? Yeah, he's yeah. he's number three wow. in the road for pound for pound. And then you got Francis Sagano at like four and five. And then you got Oliveira at like six. Uh, and then then you, you got, got John Jones, who's literally never lost a fight on and, his own. And I don't even think he's in it anymore. Yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. What a, what a, how was that feeling? You get ranked for the first time, so you're pumped, right? And yeah. then you get D-ranked without even losing or nothing happened. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely a weird feeling. I remember waking up being like, oh, I'm 15 in the world. Man, this is so fucking cool. Yeah. And then next week, I was like, 
Oh, oh shit. Okay, now yeah. I'm a nobody. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. What so do, do fighters like? Okay, so since that's fluctuating, is it right for fighters to be so confident on that ranking number? Uh, I mean, that's a question for both of you guys. Really, on the on the what? Say it again. On the, on the ranking it's number, fluctuating, yeah, whatever that number is, no, no. because there's some people that are like, you know, no, I'm like this, I'm, you know, like Kobe's what number two at a number who's like the number one contender at welterweight right now, or number two, you know, and it's like, uh, and Chimaya's number three, uh, it's like, in my eyes, I would say Chimaya's number two, and Kobe would be number three or number four, it's like he's inactive, you know, it's like he keeps losing to Usman. And Newsman just lost to Edwards. She's See, taking I, down some. So I definitely figured. think inactivity should like play play it. I think so. Play into it too, like man, because like look, like, I was looking at the rankings. Like, well, like I understand why I got moved out the rankings and Umar got put put back got put in. Yeah. At that time, but then I started looking at the rankings. Started looking at the actual names. And I'm like, wait, so you got a guy who was in there like Frankie Edgar, who was one in uh, two in the division, one in four in his last five. I was like. Why is he ranked and I'm not? Like I'm yeah. five and zero, oh, like four four wins by knockout, uh, one fight of the night. So like, yeah, I, I should be in the rankings. But why is he? Why is he in the rankings? Yeah, because I'm like, like, I have like at this division, I don't care what he's done at forty five, fifty five, but in this division, he hasn't done anything. Because like his best win was Pedro Munoz, which was a good fight, but he lost two cents. You know, so it's kind of just like, uh, yeah. How do you get yeah. ranked? Yeah. What's worse, the judging or the rankings? You know, that's why I'm wearing, that's why I'm wearing the uh, the Rob the Judges shirt, man. Yeah, <laughs> Rob the Judges, man. Judges, judges, judges is probably judges. the worst. For the, yeah. What's perfect perfect segue? Did you watch the fights this weekend? The past? Yes, I did watch the fights. Okay, so yeah. we got. Well, yeah, let's argue. Yeah, we. <laughs> here we go. But seriously though, the, we we talked about this on the way here, but three parts to this. Obviously, Islam dominant. Didn't think that was gonna happen. Wrong on my prediction. Should credit to him, man. Uh, but the the I think this one here, uh, the judges, the Sean O'Malley fight, right? Peter Young, what's your take on that? What, who do you think won and why? In in moment in the moment, I was like Peter Young won this fight. But then kind of going back and kind of just like uh, kind of rewatching it in parts, I'm like, you know what? It's not the, this fight was by no means a robbery. By no means was it a robbery at all. Yeah, like, it was just. Like, because the judges, even though it's so, like, cut and dry in the rule book and, like, how in the judging handbook, like, how you're supposed to score a fight, like, you can still see a fight and be like, oh, no, I think this guy won. That, yeah. That's how judges sometimes screw it up or fuck it up for a lot of these fighters. Yeah. That they'll be like, oh, well, this guy did a lot more damage, but this guy got a takedown but did nothing with it, even though he did. He was on top for, like, a minute or two. He's like, but the guy who did the damage had a fight-ending sequence that was close to happening, but... You know, he just did a lot of damage, but this guy ends up taking him down. So they're going to give the guy, they they end up giving the round to the guy that was on top for like a yeah. minute or two. Yeah, yeah, I felt the same way. Like when I watched it in the moment, I was like, no. And I'm going for sure, yeah. Sean. You know, but I've also, I've had a judge, um, you know, send me the, the rules on how judges, because I was looking at possibly getting licensed to, just so I know the yeah. you know, how they look at stuff. And you're right, it is very does tell you right yeah. like it's very it's, like, it's right. so it depends on what they're seeing what they think is and they better. and it's it's like it's like it's almost like in tears like damage is scored overall damage is scored yeah. overall and then i think it starts going like then it's this then it's this then it's this it's like i think it's uh damage then i think it's uh control uh takedowns and then after that i believe it's just uh, i which round just, did they rock each other was that the first or the second they both, I, I believe they both rocked each other in the second. Second, okay. Yeah. The second okay. round. But that one for sure, like, I, like. So second was, round was clearly yawns. Was clearly yawns. Yeah. And then that third round, I, his. I gave, I, I gave it to Sugar Sean. I gave the third round to Sugar Sean. That, that knee that cut him open, yeah. even though it didn't rock or anything yeah. like that, it, it just cut him open so viciously. Blood's pouring everywhere. It's like, it's, it's theatric, you know? It's like, it's like, it's hard to take that out of your brain. Mm -hmm. He landed a takedown, but then you also see Sean trying to get his back and then looking for submissions off his back. It's like he was the more to me, he was the more active fighter even in the third round, and he landed the damaging shots. First round was the one that was in the air for yeah. me. Yeah. You know, it was like who won the first round? That was really what was in the air. You know, it's like, fuck, who did they give it to? You yeah. Know, he got the takedown, you know, and they I, I thought they both rocked each other in that round too. Uh, but 
you know, it looks like freaking, you know, when Sugar Sean went back for the takedown at the end of the round and didn't get it, but swim to the back. Mm -hmm. I thought that that was kind of. Let me ask you, both of you guys, cool. fighters, obviously fucking phenomenal at your guys' craft. And so you're in it. It's, it's a spectator, right? Watching it. Huge fan, though. Study a lot of the game. I thought when I watched it, I was like, Sugar did enough. But I thought they were going to get it to Peter because of the takedowns. For me, it's like, okay, it, it does. It's the damage. But you put yourself in the ref's position. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the judges. They're watching it in real time, right? So how do you score if that's a significant strike or damage, right? Part of that's it. But the thing that did it for me, which I don't know if they do it a lot, but like did why Peter Young's a strike, right? That's his... Why did he try to take Sugar down? Yeah, because he got—he was getting his ass beat. Like the stand-up to me looked straight up, but for you, how does that feel though? Somebody gets you down, right? If they control you the whole round, beat you up on the ground, you understand why they win. But Sugar got up, right? It wasn't like anything crazy. I mean, how do you guys feel about that? As far as that, you think it should go to that? You think there should be another? I mean, yeah, it's, system? it's like you know, we should definitely think about everything in play here. But it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, we kind of—I think we all kind of knew the game plan for Peter Young was, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to hit a takedown on this kid yeah. and beat him up. You know, it's like, if you look at Sugar Sean in the Cheeto fight, I like Sugar. You know, it's like, uh, we look at him in the Cheeto fight, when he did get down on the ground, you know, the elbows were ultimately what paid the difference. Yeah. Right? So, oh, yeah, no, for sure. And if you're, if you're fighting Sean just strictly just one way, he's going to eat you up the entire yeah. time. Yeah. Like, he does a really good job of setting a high volume, high volume pace, and it's like, if you don't mix it up on him, then he's going to, he's going to ruin you. He's like, he's, yeah. he's really, really good. And a lot of people are like, a lot of people are kind of just uh, looking at Sean and be like, nah, he's not as good as everybody thinks. No, he is that good. Yeah. He's like, what? It's like, you got someone like Peter Yan, who was the scariest striker in the division. Shooting takedowns. Shooting takedowns. Yeah. And it, you have to mix it up. You, this, is, this is why it's called MMA. You have to Absolutely. mix it up on him. But also with those takedowns, you got to do, you gotta do, do something. some more damage. You got to do something. Yeah. You got you to gotta try to equate the damage that he did on his on his feet to what you uh whenever you get him down either that or get into a super dominant position like a mount the back uh even if a side control man like crucifix position like you have to get to those advantageous positions and shoot control a little bit more but like in the positions that sean was in it was like half guard maybe i don't even think they were in side control that long it was like half guard to full guard and they were just kind of just hashing out in that yeah area. Like no 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 real like control like especially if like you're in jujitsu and wrestling all that stuff you know what the control is it's like if he's still able to scramble that's not too much control if uh you got the mount then you're like all right cool that's that's a dominant advantageous position where i can land some damage land some shots or even then you just know like you just there like like Algerman, whenever he took peter Jan's back for the, for like he was there for like the whole, whole round yeah and that's that was super dominant yeah. i feel like that's like oh yeah no that's definitely yeah, absolutely it's definitely a, a when Aljo takes you down yeah. though he fucking smacks you yes yeah, that's, and that's also skin that. he, Another and he's and he, if you notice how he's hitting him, he's like he's not hitting him here. You know, he's like he's 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 like knuckle palm. Oh yeah, no, you know, old school. I'm your I'm your fucking uncle <laughs> and just give you a little. Be, and, but it should be too. I know they say octagon control, but you don't get no credit for controlling the octagon in the air. And I felt like Sugar was controlling the entire pace of the stand up for the most part. Like I think Peter Young rocked him a couple times with some shots, but the pace on the uh, on yeah. feet was more Sugar a little bit. Yeah, and, and it's like you shouldn't get more credit for you getting your ass kicked in the air, which again. Close fight, but if you're getting beat up in the air and you go to the ground just to take down, you don't do anything. You shouldn't get more points for saying, "Oh, well, he took him down, right?" Like, yeah, and it survived. And it's yeah. also it's it and also the damage and like the uh, the fight ending sequences is still kind of like it's it's uh I guess it's still subject to interpretation. Absolutely, because yeah. like you can look you can look at the uh the sh like Sh Sugar Sean like he he lands like let's just say he lands like a a five piece like a double jab cross hook, uh like double jab cross hook cross at the end of it and it's like he like it does damage but Jan just throws one overhand right hits him rocks him what are you counting more the five yeah. piece that landed or that overhand right so yes of course the volume on uh might have been on Sean's end but who landed the more damaging shot and sometimes that's where the that's where it starts getting a little bit crazy you start looking at these stats you start looking at all the all this other stuff, you start looking, it's like, well, what are the judges really going to be looking at? Because it, yeah. it, it's, again, this is another reason why I'm like, I look at the judging, it's like, I don't harp on them too much, but whenever there's like stuff like, uh, you know, like, I actually go back to one of my, to one of my fights when I fought David Grant, like, there's a 29-28, I, I, I got two judges that were like 29-28 for me, but then this other judge, Tony Weeks, was out there saying, no, nah, it's a 30-27 for David Grant. 
like how the fuck how, how, how the does fuck that is, happen how the fuck does that yeah. come across well you know so like i look at stuff like that and i'm like okay that was just a that was just a shitty judge there yeah you know but you look at that like how under what uh Umbrella, are you judging yeah, it? Yeah, what are you judging it by? Like yeah. the the shots being landed or that damaging shot. So, you know, I I that's what that's why when at the end of that fight I thought Peter won, but I was like, you know, it's like a fifty five forty five on me. Like okay. it's fifty five percent Don, forty five percent Sean. But like it's now like it's super close to me. Like after watching that fight and just like, like it's it's to me it's more it was more like a toss up. I. I like, I'm just like, you know, if you can make an argument for both winning. I'm not like... Yeah, either yeah. a great fight all like, around. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll sit here and be like, I'll talk shit. And be like, nah, Peter Young, you suck. No, <laughs> you suck. You suck. Like, I, I definitely want to fight both those guys. But, yeah. like, I'm not going to be like, no, the no, like, I'm going to be honest about it. Like, it was a fight that you could argue either, either way. Either way, yeah. yeah. It felt like, though... It, it was a fun one to watch, for sure. Great fight. The fans won, right? It was yeah. a great fight. And, but it felt like it was kind of maybe a breakthrough for the judges, hopefully. I, mean, like, I really won that night. I didn't have to pay to watch it. I got paid to watch it. <laughs> Fuck. Double win. <laughs> Double dub. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. And, and now my quarterman has to color his hair pink. So it's fucking Even better. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. It's a hell, it was a hell of a night. I had fun with it. What about the uh, <laughs> TJ Dillashaw? TJ, obviously. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Yeah. You know, out, me and Aljo, same management and stuff like that. And you and Aljo, mm-hmm. close. Yeah, yeah, that so. was just... I told Warren right off the rip, like, you know, it's like, it sucks. It sucks for Aljo, sucks for TJ, sucks for everybody involved because yeah. it's like, you know, he had a hell of a performance, uh, but who knows, you know? And it's like, how do we know? It's like, looks like it would have went that way no matter what, but, you know, one arm is one arm and uh, TJ should have did a way better job taking care of his body. And, uh, you know, it's like, I know all about shoulder rehab and obviously he's not doing his fucking shoulder rehab, right? right. Hey, look, when you don't have the steroids. I was going to say steroids, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Hey, look. What are you? I'm putting that out there, bro. Fuck that guy. <laughs> no, but yeah, seriously, I mean, look. I'm. I'm not. I don't. I. I don't know T.J. Dillashaw's a person, right? So this is purely the fighter. And I think it's bullshit. You. You fucked and robbed a division, man. And you put a ton of people in jeopardy. You. You know, obviously, KO gang. So I'm a Sterling fan, right? And I yeah. wanted to win. Said he's going to win before, but I just think that's a bitch move, man. It's kind of like a guy wearing a fucking turtleneck. It's just a bitch move. Like he's literally, I don't like turtlenecks, by the way. I don't know I why. Tell. But, but it's, the, you know what I mean? But he, here's got a guy, there's, look, there, like, God forbid somebody has knee surgery, we talked about, and he's out for a year and he wants to come back and fight. Let's use, I like, like Cruz, right? He had s- surgery on his knees. He comes back. Hey, man, that guy deserves a fight or a title fight because he's earned his way. He missed time because he was injured. Like, TJ Dillashaw, you missed time because you cheated. Stop saying, well, I didn't want to wait my turn for another fight. Then don't cheat, right? You got, busted cheating and then now you come back there's a ton of people in that division that's stacked that should have could have fought for that right and then he's injured he lets everybody know in his camp he's injured that it's popping out 20 times look one time if it popped out and he thought he was okay okay but he said 20 times i really couldn't train and then he comes into a a huge card the a a title fight he does that it's kind of like hey man you should go to the back of the line unranked and 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 let's be real about it had they fucking called cheeto they fucking oh, called Cheeto. He'd have been there. Had they called Cheeto two weeks, two weeks before the fight. Like, hey, Cheeto, you know, fucking TJ, you know, he's off his meds. You know, his body won't hold up anymore. He's wearing turtlenecks. You know what I mean? <laughs> can you can you be the man that you are and save the day? Cheeto would have been there. Now, who knows what would have happened in yeah. that fight? And freaking, you know, Team KO reps. So, you know, picture perfect road. Once again, Alger goes out there, runs shop, does it good. You know, it's like uh, had Peter Jan got that done. It's like maybe you would have had to do a three-peat. It would have been a great fight. Yeah. yeah. But now you would have had Cheeto versus Sugar Sean in a bigger spot. Yes. Ready to fight. Ready to get that rematch out the way. You know, it's like but fucking Cheeto, man. Cheeto would have been ready yeah. at all times. Cheeto would have stepped up for the title fight. You yeah, know, no, had Cheeto-, Cheeto won and then Sugar won, it would have been a crazy fucking scene of adventures. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, Cheeto's always ready. Yeah. You see, you see, I don't think that should be a lot. I mean, that's, I just think that's a total... Ways because then he, that's, he tried to come on and I felt like he was trying to downplay Sterling's win a little bit. All oh, yeah. was hurt. It's like, yeah, that's the, that's what I didn't like. And I and I yeah. and I'm a T.J. Dillashaw like fan. So when I saw that, but I'm also you know, when I watch sports, I don't watch it bias. And when I was watching it, and and that was the first thing he said. I was like, man, like you know, Coach was talking about earlier. All his of, team didn't say all no, of, he can't fight. All of, he's been all of for. Uh, all love for for Aljamain, but I absolutely uh, TJ has every right to say that. I mean, yeah, he does. He should have did the, his team and them should have did the right thing. They should have pulled out of the fight. 
They yes. should have not showed up, you know, so you can have a chance to prove that point. But, um, yeah. Or don't say anything because he made it sound like he was the victim. Like, why do you want to have to wait another year for another fight? But it's yeah. like, bro, the reason you did that is because you cheated yeah. and you got stripped. So it's, it's different. If, if again, you don't want to wait. I agree. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's like uh, going in there fucking that hurt against a savage. Yeah. Somebody you know is one of the best in the world. It's like props to you for even trying it. Yeah, no, yeah he did. That was pretty amazing that he lasted that yeah. long with one shoulder. And period. yeah, it's like, and let's argue that this man's shoulder was yeah, but you, no question about it. The shit's fucking, fucking dangled. But you just see, yeah. but look, good man, job. you can't you take know? anything away from Sterling. Like, he didn't start giving yeah. him some credit. But in the middle of the fight, he's like, I mean, Sterling, I think Sterling has some of the best ground and pound. Oh, it's crazy. Especially from yeah. fucking these weird ankles that he manages to get people in. He's yeah. yeah. No, no, like after, after training with them and like seeing like it's, there's a reason why his nickname is the Funk Master. Yeah. Like, dude, it's so, like, it's so weird. I never, he doesn't shoot typically, he doesn't shoot like the typical person. Yeah. It's like, it's so, it's, it, it, like, man, I, I've, I've wrestled against like uh, another, another really high level wrestlers and I'm just like, they don't, like, Aljamain doesn't shoot like any of those guys. Yeah. Like, in, when he clasps his hands together, you're not getting away from that guy. You're just not. Like, that's why I knew, like, when he got Peter's back, he's like, I I immediately thought it was a wrap. Like those second and third rounds, I was like, oh, nah, Aljamain, he's getting him out of here. Yeah. Like, but props to Peter for like for him like surviving those yeah, rounds. Yeah. yeah, bro. Like it. And that's one of the best in the division. That's that's where best, I'm, best in the division. That's the only you know that's the only thing you can really give TJ props on though. It's like, oh, no, bro, he backpacked you and you survived one round yeah. with one arm, bro. Be proud of yourself. Yeah. Be very proud of yourself. No, it's, you know? Look, man, I'm not a fighter, so I get my ass whooped. It's so, like no, but it's arm, like, but, no, it's like TJ, be proud of yourself. You know, it's like, yeah. don't be mad at yourself. I mean, don't be mad at your body for not holding up anymore. Don't be mad at yourself for not winning the fight. You did good. You you didn't get choked in one round, you know? It yeah. took more than one round for you to ultimately get fucked up. But it, you did good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to uh, TJ and his one arm. I was, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was really excited for multiple reasons why, yeah. I, why it was like, you know what? I'm glad that he was able to endure that just yeah. a little bit more. You know, because I, I, I felt, I felt, I truly felt a way. He got about, every smack he ever deserved. Yeah. I mean, that he took yeah. some smacks in there. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he was going out in the first round when he was hitting him at one point. Yeah. No, I was, I was. I was like, yeah, yeah, Aljo hit him harder, bro. Yeah, but but yeah, get an extra one for yeah, me. Sure, yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, get one for me. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he, he got ten for me, but yeah, yeah. Was, he was just smacking like crazy. Yeah, but in the middle of the fight, Sterling was like, hey, like his shoulders out, like just stop it. Yeah, that's yeah. what, and I think too, as a, I mean, if you both of you guys, what if you're fighting someone, you see he's clearly injured, right? It, there is respect to the game, right? You see it all the time. You have crap set for the last dude you fought. Right. He's still, Thank and I'll fuck that guy too. <laughs> uh, he wears turtlenecks. And so we're gonna see. But if you're a fighter, you see, you know, respect. You understand what it's like. Guys training, you trying to not get through injuries. You don't want to see that someone get injured. But you're in the middle of a fight and you see your opponent's shoulder dangling. Do you really want to go as hard as a fighter still? Like, no, not really. But I mean, shit, depends who you are. You yeah. know, I don't think Aljo and TJ really like each other. So fuck it. Yeah. It was my last guy. I go double down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really just depends who the guy is. Depends who's standing across from you. Yeah. yeah. It's like we're supposed to be professional, but it's like uh if Brunson's shoulder was hanging out, you know, and it's like I would have pulled his other one out. Yeah. You know, it's like if Victoria's shoulder was hanging out, you know, it's like I probably would have shot him in his toe and then pull the other one out because he's a big strong bastard. You know, it's like uh yeah, either way, it's like fuck those guys. Yeah. Uh it's like if something like that was going on with Tim Means, you know, I'd have been I probably would have tried to get to a dominant position, probably looked at the ref and be like, come on, bro, this makes no yeah. sense. So yeah, I feel him 100%, you know? So yeah, just depends who the guy is, right? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Like, I wish Kerry Hadley didn't stop stop me at that point in time, man. I will, wanted a couple extra shots, you know? Yeah, that was, you know? That was, that was just, hey, bro, that card with y'all two on it was, was a good oh, card. Phenomenal. No, I'm telling you. And it had my son on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jackie. Booger Buckley, <laughs> Joaquin. Uh, yeah. That was a great. It's a funny story. We were there front row. Uh, uh, you were walking out, and my son was like, "I want to, I want to get him." He, by the way, he loves Houston. Every time we take him to a car, he starts dancing. And uh, you were walking by, and you didn't say anything to anyone, and you fist bumped him. And like somebody has it on video and sent it, and was like, "Hey, he bumped your son." I was like, "Oh shit, that was cool." But and then when I showed, I showed him who we were interview today he's like dad that's the guy that i bumped nuts with i'm like no you didn't connor like you didn't bump nuts. he's like yeah yeah and he like shows the video i was like oh shit that's like, that's cool. I, was like, I take it back like, <laughs> but I, I feel bad for the person like whenever i was walking out like i remember this vividly walking out because i was that was like at that that austin card was the biggest stage of my career like right. i had like that, that was my first time fighting outside the apex and i fought there and i just remember like being in that moment walking out 
Everybody's like, yeah, fuck Tony Khan. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> I hear that one fucking guy, man. That one fucking guy was like, fuck you, Adrian. <laughs> it's like Tony Kelly's about to knock you the fuck out. And I, like, at the moment, I thought he was right next to me. And, like, I'm walking, touching, touching. And then this, I hear it. And then the person, like, the person who was there, I can't remember. I flicked that person off. And I, and I remember, <laughs> I remember uh, the person going, <laughs> but come to find out like i was like i was like i think i'd put it on my uh ig i was like hey somebody said fuck you adrian like uh fuck you adrian and like you get knocked the fuck out and, like somebody find that guy for me that middle like, finger was for him yeah <laughs> not, not I mean, the other person and you couldn't find out like uh like i had homies that that was able to find him and they like oh no he was on snapchat they got it they screen recorded it so i, no I got way. i got i got it on my old phone after uh after i knocked him out the 50k bonus you know i got a new phone after that upgraded so, you know, <laughs> hey but, tony i'll yeah. give you i'll give you some good love on this one he got it you come out you come over right to him. <laughs> you got him. Oh, yeah. yeah. So on. somebody got it. I guess the people that were next to him got it, but they said it. So then for the That's guy dope. that you told, dude, you yeah, know, yeah, finger, yeah. I got the good stroke. Yeah, you got the good one. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, you did. It was, it was good. You just pumped. And you said that that, that knockout was uh, like the, the highlight knockout of your career so far. Why was that? Well, it, it was just like everything kind of just like uh, had all the mixings. It was like, you know, whenever you wake up like on Christmas christmas day and wrapping is just mm. and then you yeah. open it it's the perfect fucking gift yeah that's what that fight was for me it's been like, years but it, yeah. yeah he was just like it was like him talking shit like i i remember i remember vividly i was like oh yeah i got tony kelly and then next you know i started getting tagged on like uh on on twitter just like my twitter starts blowing up like the fuck did i do something like what did i do <laughs> come to find out people were like no nah, i beat this guy's ass was like what's going on and then i heard what he said and i'm like oh that's not a good look I was like, yeah. that's not a good look. And then, uh, like, he said what he said. Uh, and, you know, people were just tagging me, telling me he needed to beat his ass. And then Gilbert Burns was like, hey, put a bounty on his head. Like, I'll send you over some money if you knock him out and shit. And I'm like, all right, cool. He's like, yeah, this one's on the house, though. He's like, I don't want to take anybody's money. And then we continuing to go on. Uh, that fight just started building up so much. And I had actually ended up getting so much more Brazilian fans, like, on my Twitter and my Instagram, like everything started blowing up. Yeah. And I was like, Oh shit. Like this is, this is like weird. I've never had this. Like even after like a couple walk off knockouts that I've had, like, uh, like I had the head kick knockout and I was like, damn, that should be like one. That should be a good one. Then I had another walk off in my next fight. I was like, Oh, that should be the one. But I was like, Oh, they were just small jumps. But, uh, this one, like with all like the storyline behind it and like, just like, uh, him just being a shitty person. It's just like, what made everything even better. And then also too, him walking out, just like flicking off everybody. And yeah. Hit that moment, Douche. doing all everything you can to be like the biggest heel he did. And then I just walk in stone face, just like, I'm not going to let any of this shit bother me, knocking him out. And then afterwards, just feeling how I felt like, and just like the iconic picture of like me flicking them <laughs> off. Yeah. That's, that's what that's set, Texas. set everything over. Yeah. It set everything over. And that was a real good look. Oh, man. And it was just an amazing card, too. I think the energy in the place, too. Everybody got behind you. That was, a, that was crazy. I was like, man, I, you know, Derek Lewis and Houston card, obviously everybody got behind him, but I put an equivalent to that behind you. It was crazy. Like, you felt that superstar moment yeah. come alive because of the buildup, and then you could feel the energy when you came out. Everyone was just, like, yeah, behind you, and then was... they were like, fuck that guy, and then... He got KO'd, which is so great. It was like, ha-ha. The Fiona Austin was lit. It was, no, it was crazy. It just, like, the energy, like, just the whole, like, you. I was in there and just, like, I, like, after, like, I, like, cause in that, whenever I was in there, I was just felt that, I just remember just, like, being the, in the ring, the cage, and just, everything was just kind of, like, silhouetted type of deal. Yeah. And then after I knocked them out, I started looking around, like, like, I, like, I was still in the zone, like, a couple seconds afterwards. I'm still trying to, like, cause I was just like, fuck this guy. I'm going to, like, if he talks some more shit, I'm about to beat his ass again. But then the commission pushed me away. And then next, you know, I look up and then er for some reason, I just start seeing people I'm like, oh, shit. I'm, re I'm really here. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'm really here. And I was like, man. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, that's whenever everything was just like, oh, shit, let's go. And then, uh, yeah, I was like, I just went on my Texas rant. I'm like, let's go, Texas. Yeah. And shit. After that. 
And that was like the best moment for me. It was like just yeah. being able to like after being uh fighting out of Texas for so long because like I would like Houston regional scenes where like all my fights took place and like just in Texas and everything. So like being able to come back to just in Texas just to fight was just the best thing. It was a cherry on top of like everything that had happened. Yeah. And now I become a superstar. Yeah, that's that's the next step. That's yeah. the next step right now. So hopefully somebody steps up. Are people yeah. gonna put some respect on your name now and see they got that hard hitting power? Uh man, man, it's uh, it's 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 weird, man. Because like I was, I've been trying to fight, and uh, a couple of people had turned me down. Uh, damn, man, it's, I, I don't want to put them on the spot, but it's just, it's put, them spot. put them on the yeah. spot. The spot. Oh, no, the, the the reason why Frankie got that fight, man, uh, you turned me down. So he's like, he got an he, yeah, Frankie Edgar ended up turning me down, and I was like. I like I get it. <laughs> like, yeah. I get it. I get it, but the guy that you chose is just equally as dangerous. You you should have chose the guy that had the pop on him right now. So it's like hey. So top three fights you would want. Right now, realistically, in grabs and reach length. In, in grabs like, in yeah. grabs mm-hmm. for me right now would probably be like Pedro Williams in Brazil. Uh-huh. But fighting him in like in like hostile territory for yeah. sure. That'd be fire. Uh, that would be fun. Uh, especially with like how much fans I got in Brazil. I think that'd be fun for me too. Yeah. Uh Rob Font too, because I just feel like that fight right there would just be banger. Yeah, like a bang, banger city. Hell of a striking match. Yeah. And the next one, the next one, uh, if Jack Shore wasn't moving up to forty five. That'd be a fun fight too. Okay, I think he's like fifteen or fourteen. Yeah, there's some good callouts. Yeah, I like that. I like that Munoz fight a lot. I have too. I like, in Brazil, I like the Font fight too, though. I would love to see the Font fight in Vegas. Yeah, I'd be live for that one. Yeah, I think yeah. he. I think he was taking. I think the reason why, like, because uh, I. The UFC was trying to make that fight happen, at least between me and my manager. They're like trying to be like, yeah, like that's the name that we were getting from after because International Fight Week. After I came back, they're like, yeah, no, we're trying to get you font. And I was like, all right, cool. So that was going back and forth. And I was like, for about a about a month and a half, I was like, I was like, yeah, let's let's uh, any updates, any updates, like is that what the UFC still wants? Yeah, Rob Font MSG is like, all right, cool, okay, cool. And next, you know, uh, I don't know what happened, but his manager ended up coming out and uh, Rob Font's manager ended up coming out and be like, we were never offered the honest fight. That's fake news for MSG and all that stuff. <clears throat> and I'm just like, well, I wish I would have found this out like about a month and a half ago. I was like, yeah, hey, man. Yeah. Like, but uh, just drop a poster anyways. Fuck it. Yeah, no, that's that's how that, that's how <laughs> that ended up coming out. Like somebody was like, oh, no, like uh, they're on my stream. I was like, yeah, no, like the, that's the name that I've been getting and nothing. Nothing else yeah. even popped in my head. Like I'm gonna share the poster and be like, "Let's <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> And I want, I wanted that fight. It just because, like, man, why, whenever I made my professional debut that year, he made his UFC debut. So I made, I, I had my professional debut in 2013. He made his, uh, uh, his UFC debut in 2013. I was like, so I have literally that man has been in the UFC since the time I made my pro debut. And I was yeah. like, that would be a fucking fun fight for what, me too yeah. as well. What, 2013, your pro debut? And how old were you then? 19. Yeah. Wow. 19. Then I turned... Yeah. And from, and from Houston, what'd you do before before uh, fighting? What before, got you in fight? Oh, before... Man, I... Pretty much, like, before fighting, I was just... Really, honestly, just playing some type of sports every once in a while. Yeah. I didn't get cut off the football team, like, for, like... I got cut off the football team when I was in middle school, and I just said, fuck that. I don't want to keep my grades up. <laughs> like, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, no. Other than that, it was just, you know, going into bodybuilding, getting fat. And then I found jujitsu at 15 years old and started losing weight and had my first fight at 17 years old, like amateur fight at 17 years old. Yeah. So I fought. My first fight was at 2011, and it was against, uh, I, I think you might know him, uh, Nico Echeverry. Mike? Yeah, he's a he's a re- he's a he's a regional guy. He's he fights at one seventy now, but like damn, yeah. Wow. So I was like, I fought him at fifty five. I was seventeen years old fighting. Uh, to me at the time, I think he was like twenty one, twenty two. So I was like, in my head, it was a grown ass man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, I'm like, I literally like cut like I was skipping class, skipping school just so I can go weigh in and fight. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, was that's really awesome. Fun. That was yeah. fun. That's the way to do it. Graduated, had more fights, but stuck to fighting. I did. Work at the plants, uh, the refineries here in Houston for a little bit, but yeah, it just wasn't for me. Yeah, I love yeah, no, I, I know what I want to do. Yeah, yeah I can feel it, man. That's awesome, man. Regular, Congratulations, no offense. Man. Seriously. Oh, like, man, it's been a long journey. Oh, my God. Man. Yeah, you it's, think about it. I was like, that's what you said. Oh, wow. God. So, you still coaching everything at the gym? I 
it, I'm, I wouldn't say coaching. I would say I'm still running the classes. Like I'm still, I still run some classes, like the fighter stuff. <clears throat> hey, like, um, like, cause I noticed I put, it, I was putting too much on my on my plate, anyways. Yeah. Like, cause like right after everything that happened, I was like, uh, like I felt like I was forced into coach and yeah. forced into like helping these guys out. But then once I started realizing, like, uh, at the level I'm at, I have to, I have to do more for myself. I, I like, I. You gotta I, be greedy. I, yeah, I had, yeah. I had to be. And then also at the same time, I felt like a lot of those guys who were like coming in were being very selfish for themselves and not yeah. trying to do a helping hand. Like my main two training partners for that Davy Grant fight, were, uh, uh, Cameron Smotherman yeah. and then also Rafion Stotts. Like, and like, if you know how Davy Grant fights, like, like, yeah, like, like I have a wrestler and then I have a, like a boxer striker who like knows only knows how to throw technical. You know, even if he tries to throw, tries to throw like wild haymakers, he just doesn't know how to do it. But, yeah. So yeah, it was like it was it was it was kind of hard. So it was like uh, like I had guys who come in and out. So I was like, yeah, like my training camp was pretty much just me and two other people. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I took a step back, started being like, all right, I'm a sh- like if I'm there, whenever I'm there, like I'm helping, like I'll, yeah. I'll be I'll be that guy, and I'll corner the guys if they ask me to corner them. Uh, I just. I'm just like gonna be like, all right. If you're not gonna show up, I'm not showing up for you. Yeah. It's like, don't, don't, don't waste my time. Now you're starting to see how the coach always felt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, coach. <laughs> yeah. No, man, I, I, he was the reason why I stayed stuck in the gym, man. Because yeah. he'd be like, hey, you're like, he, like, uh, especially coming up, he'd be like, hey, man, uh, like, remember right after your fight, you know, you take your time, take your time, but remember these guys helped you get there, so. Oh, help them, back. yeah. So yeah. that's that's my mindset towards helping people train, and they didn't like, grab it the way you grabbed it. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. So I'm I'm going every single time I'd fight, give myself like about a minimum of two days now, because I I remember going back that Monday sparring. I just remember feeling like shit. Yeah. Uh, after like a hellacious fight, and I was like, yeah. So you know, uh, gave myself week like three minimum three days. Off I always take a week off. Fight, and then after that, maybe a week. Uh, depending on how bad it is, but if I'm not if I'm not hurt, I'm back in there immediately, just helping the guys out. Even yeah. if I'm not sparring them, I'm just helping them run through things. Like or I'll like hold mitts for them. I make sure I'm there for make sure I'm there. But if you don't give me the same energy, like in helping me prepare for my fight, I'm not helping you prepare for you. Oh, makes sense. Makes, makes it's sense. It's got to be mental, right? I mean, it's got to be a mental. Yeah. Just I mean, being an entrepreneur, you deal with that. You know can't help people bring them up, right? If they don't want to come up, you're never going to bring them up. But those people will bring you down. Those yeah. people will literally bring you down. And it's tough, man. You don't want to be like, oh, I made it. Now I'm cutting you out. But it, it is, man. What got you here won't get you there. And, you know, you're both of you guys are on that next level, right? You're on that additional level. You can't be hanging around the same people if they're not going to elevate their game, too. Everybody's yeah. got to elevate. Wolves oh, yeah. are sheeps. Wolves oh, are sheeps. Oh, yeah. Sheeps. No, I, t- I, told, I was actually, man, I was actually wrapping uh, one of my training partner's hands uh, before one of his fights. And I remember talking to him. He's like, "Yeah, like I make this this much on my paycheck. Like I'm happy with this." And I was like, "I was like, bro, don't you have two kids?" He was like, "He's like, yeah." I was like, "Bro, like I don't want to like talk shit to you or anything like this, bro. But like, like this is what you want. You want to do this?" He's like, "Yeah, I want to do this. Like, yeah, like 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 I, I'm telling you right now, you can change your life." Yeah. Like you can. I was like, the paycheck that you you're you're happy about, like not to like diminish anybody's. Everybody's uh like what they get paid, but he's like, yeah, I'm bringing home six hundred a week. Like, yeah, it's like great. I'm like, yeah, but you know what you're doing right now? Like, you're you're about to be five and zero after this fight. I was like, if you stay in the gym, you stay ready. Like, you might get a short notice call. You end up going from like uh, you end up going like six hundred a week. Let's just say you fight for for ten and ten your first fight, and let's just say you go out there, you start your guy, you get fifty fifty uh fifty thousand, you get the fifty k. That's seventy thousand dollars you just made in a day. And probably two times more what you made, what you made in uh making in a year. It's like, yeah. and that's only in one fight. And then next fight, let's just say you fight, uh, fight you get you get the twelve and twelve, you get uh twenty four k on top of that. Like, bro, like that's 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 a standard first UFC contract, ten yeah. to ten. Like, yeah. like that can change somebody's life. That changed my life. I I fought in the contenders. I got five and five. I I got got the ten k. Uh, and then after that, I was still working, and then. Uh, I quit the week before fight week, and I I fought. I got ten and ten. I got the fifty on top of that. So I was like, 
oh, bro, like I can literally like I was like uh net income, like what I what I actually came home with. I was like twenty eight thousand, twenty thousand for the year. And I was like, damn, like I'm fighting. I just literally just made like eighty k off of two fights. I was like in Texas. I'm fucking solid. Yeah. <laughs> like if I was in Cali, like in New York, I'd be like, all right, you know, I got, I got, still got to work. But in Texas, I'm solid. Like 30, 30 K you're, you're living comfortably. But I was like, nah, 80 K is like, all right, cool. Like let me set some of this aside. Let me do this with this. And then I was like, all right, and then I got a fight. And then uh, I got another 50 K. So I'm telling you, it's like, I was telling these guys, like you can, like you can change people's life. And like, the 2021 year was the first year I ever saw how much I actually made. And I was like, God damn it. I was like, bro, it was like, I never had to pay. Like I had to pay more in taxes than what I got paid. You used to make. Than I, than <laughs> I used to make. I was yes. like, bro, I was like, you can change, yes. you can change your life doing this stuff. I was like, so stay in the gym, stay ready. Like, cause I'm telling you, I was like, I, I, I literally used you as an example. I was like, look at Kevin Holland. He was like, he fought next thing you know. He was taking a fight, another fight, another fight, another fight, another fight. I was like, look where he's at now. It's like, I'm telling you, y'all don't like, don't think it's impossible. It's possible. Yeah. It's only if you want to do it. Then it, I might have switched the head, it switched, flipped a switch in his head because I seen that guy like a week later after the gym. He's like, he doesn't have a fight booked up for like the rest of the year and he's still in the gym. So I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. That's, I hope That's that, I hope be. that did. I hope it yeah. did do yeah. that. You know, and I told a lot of, like, there's an amateur. Amateur who just fought this weekend, and he was. I was talking to him. I remember his last fight, where he lost. Uh, he, he won over the weekend, but he lost the fight before. And I remember telling him, I was like, bro, like, you were so inconsistent. Like, I'm telling you right now, you're way better than the guy that you fought, but you made stupid decisions. So I was like, you are better than what you what you think you are. Like, you're training with like guys who are up there at that level and are able to keep up. Yeah, keeping up with guys at that level means you're better than these guys. Like your level right now, you're an amateur. You're 17. You just turned 18. You just, just gotta show up when it's time just, to fight. Just, just show yeah. up. That's all you gotta do. Just show up to the gym, and then whenever it comes to fight night, just think of it. Think of it as like a, a sparring session with like, with a super high level guy. Just, just yeah. want to make a name off of him. Like that's all you literally gotta do. Went out there. You know, he did have a slow start, but he finished off strong. So I'm happy about that. But he's still 18, so I was like, all right, young got some time. Yeah. Got some time. Young, to young. Yeah, you got some yeah. young guys. That's good. Yeah. Maybe. Might be John Jones' record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you got to yeah. see it, though. You can't. I mean, you got to show up. You got to put in the work. You got to see where you're going. How the fuck are you going to get somewhere if you don't even know where you're going, right? Oh, yeah. You don't have any goals. You don't envision it. You're just like, hey, I'm going to go to the gym. Like, what do you want to see yourself? You want to get to that next level? Yeah. I remember Benoit Ryan was telling me the story about changing your life. He, he was like, yeah, I, he won fight of the night, and he got the 50. I guess he, something happened to the other guy where he had to forfeit it because of weight or what oh, whatever happened. Yeah, he came and out of weight. So he got the his 52, so he got the 100. He was doing an interview, and he was like, he goes, I want my, he ran down, give me my big fucking check. I want my check right now. I'll take the big one. He was freaking out. He was like, hey, man, it changed his life, right? Yeah, no, like, man, people don't, people don't take it to account, like, and understand, like, how much it does change your life. They, they, it, like, for the average person, because a lot of these MMA guys, they like uh, it's not like a uh, boxing. It's not yeah. even like that boxers are making, but like most of these guys are still working an uh, everyday job. Yeah, so, like yeah. The, like the fact that like most of these uh, blue collar workers or like these like because I was working for the city. I was wait, working for the city. Good benefits. Good good like good benefits. I had a nice, healthy, stable job. People liked me. Everybody loved me. Uh, but you know, I was like, you know, I like I. I don't want to just to be this. I want something more. And then I got that. I was able to get the the bonus. I was able to get whatever whatever I got, you know, from the fighting and all that stuff. So fuck. Now you train full time. I'm training full time. Now I'm able to do what I do. And like I don't have to wake up at seven o'clock. Like no, six o'clock. Actually, no. So whenever I was training to get into the UFC and get into my contender shot, I was waking up at five AM in the morning, uh going to the gym, running, training, doing whatever I could. Going to work at seven thirty, uh, leaving the gym, leaving my job at five, because uh, training started at six, and I'm over there in Laporte Deer Park area, trying to come to downtown. Actually, around this area, in, tra- in the traffic area, crazy like, man. Yeah, if you know two twenty five, you know that's where all the refineries are at. Yeah. So 
everybody's getting off at five to six. So you're hitting tr- not, nothing but nonstop traffic. So I literally am standstill traffic, wrapping my hands, <laughs> wrapping my hands just to make sure I get to, yeah. get to the gym, putting on shin guards. So I, whenever I get there, I'm ready to go. And like a lot of people don't see that, but like that's just stuff that I had to do just because yeah. I wanted it that bad. And actually to the point where like the, uh, at my job, uh, they went from like, you know, we're going to do the change of hours. We're going to try to do like this time, this time. So I actually ended up getting less time uh, later on. Like uh, I didn't, ended up getting off at 5.30 and then the, everything with the gym was going on. So we were switching gyms. So I actually ended up having to go to the Heights to go. Wow. So I was like, yeah. So I'm like, oh no, bro. I was, I was all over the place. Yeah, I was that's like rough. driving and I'm yeah. surprised I made it at times. I'm surprised I made it like about, uh, my GPS would say, oh, no, you're going to get there at 620. I'd get there at 605 because I'm like cutting. Sh- oh, cut yeah. Ball, yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a de- I'm a degenerate driver. Correct. <laughs> Damn. As we got to get you a fight. Can we, UFC, can we get him a fight? Can we get, can yeah. we, get, let's get him a fight? Get, get him a fight. Let's go. Give him, give him Pedro Munoz, <laughs> fucking Brazil. Angel, let's go. Or give him Rob Font in Vegas. I prefer Rob Font in Vegas. Or put him on my cards. So I can watch him fight before I fight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think that's it, guys. Yeah. They're wrapping it up, man. We appreciate you coming on. That's oh, man, I incredible inside stuff, man. Yeah. And remember, guys, rob the fucking judges. Rob yeah, the rob judges. them, my guys. Don't let them yeah. rob you. Rob I'm them. I'm telling you, my guys, bro. Like I, even just on the regional scene, bro. I seen I seen judges screw over so many people's uh, careers before they even started, man. So like, yeah, hold them. Accountable. Hold them accountable. Uh, yeah, like there's the oh, man, in a better class. Yeah, I, I can I can go on I can go on a rant just on the Texas Commission, but I'm not going to. No, we love the Texas yeah. Commission. <laughs> Best commissioner in the road, Texas yeah. Commission. <laughs> only only we, we, we're going around on the one guy. That one guy's still talking shit too. No, we we, we like that one guy. Yeah. No, that one guy's I, good. I like I like Gus and Ramsey for yeah. sure. Gus yeah. and Ramsey are, are like I think I think, I think of a couple. No. Just bad with names, as you guys seen it from the last podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's a wrap. All right, guys. Well, realize, recognize. This was Adrian Yens. I don't even know what episode this was, but it was a good one. It was a good one. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.